Hello, everyone, and welcome back. Game number one of the day is in the books. That's match number five of the stage two tournament. Before we get into game number two of the day, where we will be going into the desert of Miramar, we'll take a look at how the standings shape up after that match. These are your total standings after five games have been played out in almost a third of the matches for stage two, where 16 matches in total will be played out over the course of four days. Brute Force still sit atop leaderboards. Yes, as we had seen, they maintain that position. Still going to be two points in the lead. A few other teams going to be very, very close within striking distance of taking down that first place position. All things considered, though, where you want to be is in the top nine at the end of four days of play. Those top nine will be advancing into the first phase of 2020 for the PEL Contenders Series. So that is the main goal. At least some pressure may be being lifted off of the shoulders of our top teams. But as it stands, those top teams are only about a game or two away from having some of our teams outside of those top nine from catching up and possibly displacing a few of our teams that are currently in those positions to qualify for phase number one, 2020. Your standings once again, kill points and placement points stacked up. You can kind of see how some of the teams have been doing significant amount of kills and significant amount of placement points coming up for a few of these teams. Those the kills that really shine through for Brute Force that put them in that first place position. Into game number two, we go. This is game number six of stage two. And across the desert of Miramar, we do soar into the plane we go. And on to the map. We get an idea of how this plane path is going to be shaping up. All things considered, it's not going to be too bad. It's slightly favored up here towards the northeast, which cuts off an immediate possibility of teams heading down to Los Higos. However, that's a scenario that we don't tend to see. Not many teams have that as their static priority loot location. From north down to the southeast, plane path going to be ending in Puerto Pariso. Squad's already being kicked out of the cargo hold. Those pilots heading up towards La Cobraria. And a few squads going to be investigating over towards the west of San Martin. That power plant area going to be scouted by both Stellar and Tony team. As the Preachers head on down to Picado. Istanbul Wildcat's going to be in an interesting 2-2 split right now. Two of their members, Apocalypse and Laza, a little bit north of Picado, trying to soak up this information. And a lot of information to be gained by doing that. They're seeing multiple squads landing around them. Stellar, Tony team, as well as the Preachers. Down towards Las Leones, a few teams going to be gravitating towards the largest city on the map. It's going to be Boris, as well as the Intruders and Hackaway. Possibly even Brute Force. It seems like Brute Force, yes, is going to be on the northern side of Los Leones. A loose split for them as we see phase number one pop. It's going to be an El Azahar circle for these teams to have to work with. In the early stages of game number two, most of our squads, an overwhelming majority of them, around 12 or 13 teams will have to make rotations into the northeastern side of the map to find safety some water going to be in play as well so although not drastically reduced it will be a bit of a smaller play area than these squads these 16 teams are used to playing off of in a traditional phase one circle stellar's beamy going to be already kicking off a bit of a scout a bit of a rotation for their team beamy went out very early in the previous game which left stellar to Pretty much playing the back foot. I believe it was Celis that was the solo player to try to champion for that squad. Boris looting up here through Los Leones. We'll have a majority of the city to pick through. Again, with the positioning that we had seen for the members of Brute Force. Very loosely spread out. Mostly around the northern side. Won't be too much of a threat. Preachers. All alone inside of Picado. None of the members of the Istanbul Wildcats decided to infiltrate. The city decided to leave it all alone. The heart of Miramar. Beamy, we just looked at him. Unfortunately, won't be able to avoid this early conflict. Micah of the ADR Farmers is trying to do just that. And we'll have a very good opportunity to do so. Beamy with the double barrel shotgun. It really doesn't have a, 
a chance in hell here against the scar of Micah unless... Beamy's able to get the drop. Beamy hasn't moved and is now going to be here in the footsteps of the member from the ADR Farmers. So holding that corner is going to be ever so important. Micah trying to continue on this investigation. I, I think Micah is becoming a little bit aware that the close quarter combat to chase down an opponent for an early game kill like this isn't necessarily worth it. Could have ended a lot worse right there for Beamy, but it looks like they're going to be able to probably see another day here in this Miramar match. Fight Club going to be on a full rotation. Three members and one Murado is still a dangerous proposition. It's not the full four stack, but it's still scary enough to put the fear of God into PUBG viewers and Fight Club fans. Dos Pilots also going to be continuing on this rotation, departing out of La Cobraria all the way to the northwest and taking a quick rotation over to the east is pretty much going to be their plan here at the four and a half minute mark of the game. A few shots going to be coming out. Hecapolita spots out Fight Club. These teams essentially have magnets inside of their pockets for one another and are always going to be drawn towards each other's presence as Martin is now trying to get out of dodge on the opposite side of the hillside. Tony team pulling up here onto another member of Stellar. Stellar very spread out. That's kind of the theme that we saw a lot of teams play off of here in this match and it's it's certainly not intentional by all of these squads it's no coordinated effort but it does create some interesting some unique problems in terms of teams trying to make rotations hack away able to avoid any of those early conflicts over towards the Las Leonas area, and now we'll be departing in favor of a northern rotation to enter into phase number one. Now, whether this team decides to play edge or whether this team decides to fully commit to a more prime position inside of phase number one, we will have to wait and see. But for now, it's just going to be a story of making their way there first and then deciding later. Preachers on the move. Major, you name it, the rest of the squad. Had an interesting time on Sanok. They had kicked off the engagement with Royalty and were quickly third-partied on. Not so much of an issue here on Miramar. That's really just a circumstance, an issue that is unique to Sanak and the close quarters of that map. Istanbul Wildcats on a rotation of their own. Laza going to be taking the point on this. Will be trying to scout out a compound for them to land. Oh, it looks like they already had a player apocalypse roll up to provide that scout and secure that location. So we'll be good for Istanbul Wildcats to at least hold on to for the next two and a half minutes until that phase one circle does close out. A big rotation still need to come in from a few squads, though. As the blue zone approaches the seven minute mark of the game, we'll see a majority of our teams who were previously outside of the circle, now with fairly centralized positions. El Azahar not going to be claimed by any team in particular. Multiple squads, four to be exact right now, positioning around the outskirts. How many Sanox can fit inside of a Miramar? Well, I'll let you do the math. Here's the thing. Four by four kilometer map for Sanok. Eight by eight kilometer map for Miramar. The interactive chat experience here at the PELC promos where you do the math. Fight Club under fire right now. Hecapolitas, again, still going to be scouting out one of their rivals. And if it wasn't a rivalry before today, well, after this match, we can certainly establish it as such. Just by positioning, just by the pressure these squads are applying onto one another alone. Rotation coming in. ADR Farmer is going to be crossing the path of Moleman. A scary player to be driving across at a Bronco. One of the slower vehicles to traverse the terrain of Miramar. Moleman swapping out the assault rifle in favor of the Mini-14 to try to tag down off in the distance one of the remaining members of this ADR squad that is trying to get out of the blue zone, trying to get in towards phase number one. Moleman was not able to find anything more than pressure. It will serve to at least be a bit of a hamper for that rotation coming out of ADR but won't be that significant thorn in the side 
that Mole Man was looking to play. Melt of Power, continuing on their path up here towards the north, finally able to escape the clutches of the blue zone. That slow, slow tick of the HP, at least in phase number one. Beamy, a very unfortunate position to find themselves in. It's not going to be that original threat that they were posed against. Oh, there it is. Beamy, huge pressure going to be applied. Needs to act quick, though. The other members of the ADR farmers are going to be rolling up onto the backside of Beamy very shortly as that phase two shift comes out. Stellar, if you look at them, they're off towards the west on the northern part of this map, and it's going to be quite a situation they found themselves in. Both squads, Stellar and the ADR farmers, heavily split up, essentially all going to be solo players based off the support that they can't give one another. ADR trying to disengage off of this after they already lost one member early on, a 3v4 scenario, not where they want to be at all, especially after this shift. They're going to be trying to make a quick effort to rotate over to the east and enter into the northern side of phase number two, where open area... At least right now, here at the 9 minute and 40 second mark of the game, awaits. That's going to be quickly changing here in probably even about 30 seconds time as multiple other squads start to enter into the fray. Crazy Crew going to be approaching onto the hillside where the members of level have been holding on to for the last few minutes. Vehicle rotation definitely going to be scouted out. Those pilots are going to be lying in wait. And the Crazy Crew roll right by. Spray down comes out. And the line of sights are going to be blocked as Crazy Crew retreats back down the hillside. Not out of dodge just yet. Pluto trying to escape has the benefit of a little bit of tree cover to protect them in those final moments to get around the opposite side of the Cruise Divide structure. But those pilots definitely have the high ground position. Whether or not it's going to come in clutch for them, whether or not they're going to be able to turn it into any kill points is another question. But it quickly gets answered. One knock already going to be coming out. Oh, 9 HP trying to vault over a wall is a dangerous, dangerous move. And one that will be capitalized on big time by the members of Crazy Crew. They find their first knock of the game. The trade back comes in as Vital moves over to his fallen teammate to put into effect the res. Boris on the move along the East Coast Highway as they continue their push up here towards the north. A slight reposition for the squad as the Phase 2 circle begins to close out. Tony team lighten it up. This is the third party presence coming in on top of Dose Pilots. Lipson will be knocked down and out. And Milt Power crossing the paths of an enemy opponent. It's going to be Royalty looking to spray down onto the squad that came up our victors of game number one of the day. Milt Power going to be stopped in their tracks. Guess who stalled out behind the rock? We'll need to do something here in the prone position, fully exposed over to the shots coming out of the mini 14 of Suppy. Infection, his teammate is able to find the flush, the confirmation of the kill. One member of Milt Power going down. Stellar able to at least recover off of the chaotic position they have found themselves thrown in on the far western side of the previous phase from the blue zone now enter in off of the northwestern corner of phase two, 20 seconds before the phase three shift. So really didn't lose much of the process. They're going to be playing edge, which is fine for a team that has all four alive. I, I, I definitely applaud the play and I definitely applaud them being able to pick up and sort of dismantle the members of the ADR farmers before doing so. Next shift comes out. It's going to be slight nudge down to the south off of our previous circle center point. Tony team in a position to quickly head down a little bit to the south and try to get a more priority spot here inside of our mid to late game transition circles. Intruders pushing off at the eastern edge of where Tony team currently lie. But for the most part, it's going to be a slight adjustment for several teams and one massive adjustment coming in for two squads. Stellar and Boris down to the southeast. Those are going to be my two teams to keep your eye on as this phase closes out. Tony team, unfortunately, going to be suffering a vehicular mishap. But on the flip side, fortunately, we'll have a bit of time and a bit of defilade 
to recover off of that before the members of Intruders get those lines of sight. Intruders are pushing up in a 2-2 formation. Markaloff and their teammate hiding back. Would it be providing that Overwatch support? Nailcop and his teammate pushing forward to be that front line in this engagement. Milton Power recovering off of having lost a teammate early. Will be standing three strong inside of the compound. However, as we switched off of them, we had seen at least a few teams starting to encroach on their surroundings. The Brute Force squad will be losing one of their standout players. At least the MVP of the squad for yesterday, Amorous, will be the first member of Brute Force to drop down. And now this Hello Senpai going to be rolling in here to provide the support. As the Bucky Tire gets popped, it immediately starts flying down the hillside, and the members of Brute Force had to make a quick decision to avoid becoming roadkill. Hackaway going to be sitting comfortably on the southwestern corner, southwestern edge. Circles don't have corners, Esquire, in phase number three. 45 seconds remain, though, as the blue zone continues to push us further, further into the mid-game. If this tire pop for rolling down the hill was intended, it's 200 IQ. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just say it was intended and that it was a 200 IQ play. The next level play is already being displayed here. Take note. Check the VOD. Shots coming out right now as the ADR farmers are able to spot out the members of Boris trying to make that rotation. Boris, last time we checked in with this squad, they were on the far southeastern edge of phase number three. They favored towards a northern rotation to enter in off of the northwestern corner. And will be clashing with the remnants of the ADR farmers. This isn't the worst position for Boris to be in. They've got the Overwatch. And as we say that, yes, actually it is one of the worst positions that they could be in. With the benefit of hindsight, as we see this circle coming out, Phase 4 shifts heavily over towards the western side of things. And is going to present the members of Boris with quite a rotation through the ADR farmers. If they wanted to avoid this engagement, it's no longer going to be an option on the table for this squad. Twenty seconds on the board before phase four will begin to encroach over towards the west and force these teams on the east and do a bit of a struggle. This is an interesting play right now coming out of Boris. They're favoring not shifting in, not taking this engagement with the ADR farmers and instead dipping back into the blue zone to try to move north. Oh, oh no. Oh no, gentlemen. Gentlemen. This is a unfortunate sight to see right now. It was a risky endeavor for them to try to make this movement up here towards the north, but it's one that, you know, it, <laughs> unfortunate to see. Brute Force also going to be in an unfortunate set of circumstances. Hacopolita stacks and the intruders put too much pressure on top of them and a vehicular explosion will be ending that squad's push here in game number... Well, no, they still have one alive. It's going to be the members of, yes... Boris that go out in 16th place position. Uh, that, that was a tough play right there. You know, I, I I know exactly what they were thinking. I think we all do. It just was a little bit too late. And the pressure coming in as well from the blue zone damage was too much. Royalty, Suppy going to be pushing up here onto the shack. Held by, I believe, the last member of the Brute Force squad. Hawk trying to find the spray down. Won't be able to do so. Suppy comes in and eliminates Brute Force in 15th place position. That's your first place team on the leaderboards. Going to be wiped out, hardly able to pick up any points here in this match. Which, if these teams are tracking the kill feed like they should be, they're going to be recognizing the opportunity that has now presented itself in this match. The opportunity to take over first place position. And the team that sits in striking distance of doing so is going to be Melt the Power. However, they are stuck out in a field and getting dismantled as we speak. By Fight Club Zorf able to find the long range SLR shots on the find the flush comes out as well and more members will present themselves in the lines of sight of that beautiful six times ADR farmers roll into a shack and Micah gets dropped out of the game almost immediately
Phase number four in full effect, 30 seconds on the clock until that blue zone will shift us into phase number five. And on the hillside, just off to the west of where the Tony team currently sit, are going to be the Istanbul Wildcats. Ginzo, Apocalypse, BSD, and the rest of the crew going to be on the high ground position to get lines of sight onto both the Tony team as well as Stellar. You see Mole Man off of the position on the far northwestern edge of phase number four in a beautiful crate, a.k.a. a bait crate. Drops right up on top of the members of Tony team. I'm not sure if they're going to be able to secure this. It could possibly be a little bit too out into the open, a little bit too exposed for them to go out and grab. But it is going to be drawing a lot of presence, a lot of eyes up here towards the northern side of what has shifted into phase number five. And it's definitely not what they wanted. I think they're making the play right now for the crate. It seems like they're pushing out of the compound. At least slightly to do so. I think that's black light. Yeah, so the, the crate wasn't too far out of the compound, but a little bit exposed. A full level three kit will be picked up by the members of Tony team, which could play a huge factor in their ability to take these engagements. 12 teams going to be alive here as we approach the, tw the 20 minute mark of match number two of the day. This is match number six, guys, of stage number two. Fiend, a player who we saw for Hackaway yesterday coming up with massive numbers, massive plays as well. Got put down a little bit early, and game number one is looking to bounce back off of that and have a huge performance here in game number two, a synonymous performance to what we saw in yesterday's matches. Phase number five, Blue Zone is pushing in. Teams starting to at least feel a little bit more pressure off of the edges to make these repositions. However, as the zone has decreased in size, these players have lost a lot of room for movement. Off of the far eastern edge is where a lot of the engagements will pop off here as the minutes continue to tick down. And the intruders, Nail Cop, is able to find one of the first tag downs on Hecapolitas. Martin gets knocked down by the Mini-14 of Nail Cop. And it's not looking good. Nail Cop and the rest of intruders have multiple... Oh, yes, it's looking good. Patrick with a massive nade coming in on to Murphle and Markolov is able to tag down that flank play that was coming out. A 3-1 split for the members of Intruders, and another nade going to be coming in, putting significant damage onto one of the only remaining members of the Intruder squad. That is the type of play that you have to be making to get out of these sticky situations. Nail Cop going to be knocked down. Intruders are absolutely getting dismantled right now, and Fight Club is going to be coming in for the third party off the western flank of where Hecapolitis is trying to recover. This is definitely not what Hecapolitas wanted. Something that could absolutely be disastrous for their team right now at this stage of the game. Going out in 11th place is where no team wants to be. It's outside of the placement point acquisition. And so their name of the game is going to be Survival. Istanbul Wildcats aggressively pushing up onto the small little chapel where... Crazy Crew is currently holding on to one member of Crazy does go down. Apocalypse going to be holding the exit. Out of the building, it will be immediately sprayed down. Quick reaction time for Vital is going to be huge for Crazy Crew being able to pick up not one, but two kills. Intruder is going to be eliminated by Hecapolitis, ending up finding those final kills onto Murphle and Crew. And this is the boiling point. This is the point of the Miramar matches where teams are not going to be able to avoid these engagements. They're going to be forced into them. They're going to be a little bit messy. And then in about one minute, things will settle down and we'll enter into the late game. Stellar, out they go. Unfortunately, Beamy is not able to champion any further for their squad in 10th place position. Stellar will be finding themselves exiting out of the match. This engagement between the Istanbul Wildcats, Crazy Crew, Tony Team, and more still pops off here. Crazy Crew will be finding their elimination here. In game number two of the day, out in ninth place position, just on the cusp of placement points, they will be exiting. Laza remains the only player, I believe, of the Istanbul Wildcats holding onto the cliffside. A very unknown position, at least for the Preachers, a position where Laza could stand to pick up a few more kills here. Fight Club. After pushing over towards that fight between the Intruders and Hecapolitis, didn't end up finding any third-party presence, and now have found themselves really pinched in between multiple different squads. Hackaway, off of the far western flank, will be pinning them down. A knock being traded back and forth between these squads as the members of Hackaway continue to run right out in the open into the lines of sight where Fight Club is holding. But in doing this, Hecapolitis, no, 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 no. They are going to capitalize on this third-party presence. They sense that a team was on their back foot, and right over the hill they peek, and right in to uh, a danger, I guess they go. Tradeback's coming in huge. Fight Club is going to be eliminated. 
But Hecapolitis is going to be going down, I believe, right thereafter. It didn't play well for them. They had a huge opportunity to come up with a massive amount of kill points, possibly even wiping out Hackaway as well, but won't have that chance any further. Six teams going to be remaining here with 16 players alive as the circle shifts up here towards the north. Blue zone going to be pushing in here. And Hackaway feeling the pressure. Lots of shots coming in. And pretty much every one of the five remaining teams besides Hackaway is looking this direction. Firing shots down onto the person of Fike. And out he goes. Hackaway in sixth place. Five teams remain. 14 players alive. Less than a three-player per team average. As we look around the circle, Level going to be playing edge right now. But pushed up very aggressively by the Preachers. You can see Major's position up the hillside. Almost caught a glimpse of Flasm. We'll be trying to track this as Flasm works his way around the hillside. Spots out one major with a huge spray down onto Moonlight. That's going to be one of the Overwatch players trying to protect the push coming out from the members of level. He tries to find the second one, but won't be able to do so. Flasm comes in huge with the M416 spray, and out goes Major. Tony team with probably the best position inside of this circle right now. Going to be looking off towards the west. Spotting out the Preachers, but having to keep their heads on a swivel because of what lies pretty much all around them. They are the center point of the attention. And multiple squads will be rotating around the base of this small hillside to try to contest their position. Trade back between Tony team. Blacklight able to find one onto the Dose Pilots. However, Saban got knocked in the process. Trying to get the confirmation. Puts himself, though, in the line of sight of Rita. Off towards the east. Who's going to be trying to find that tag down. Trying to stay alive for Dose Pilots, but they are being swarmed. The members of Tony team are going to be pushing out. And there it is. They're able to find the spray down. Down goes Rita. Down go the Dose Pilots in fifth place. Four teams now going to be remaining just shy of hitting a two-player per team average. This is pretty crazy, especially given the fact that we do have Tony team. Once they get this res on the Sabin with four boots, four sets of boots on the ground. This is definitely going to be Tony's team game to walk away with if they can close it out. But they've got to continue to play this clutch. Solo player threats are going to be presenting from all around the circle, as well as the Preachers still going to be Holding on, on the west, two players spread out in prone positions, trying to be insurance policies, trying to diversify the risk, but also hold multiple angles on where Tony team could be coming from. Spray down comes out. Tony team, Blacklight with one more kill, is able to find Levels Flasm. Out goes Level in fourth place. Blacklight has to get res very quickly for Tony team to maintain that four-player strong squad the number advantage that is really going to give them the opportunity to close this match out three teams left alive it's going to be a solo player laza for the istanbul wildcats versus a duo of preachers Febberino looks off towards the west is able to spot out one of the members of the Preachers saw the barrel come from outside of the rock. And also here's the shot coming in from the Istanbul Wildcats. Both players going to be exposed. Down goes one of the members of the Preachers. And out go the Istanbul Wildcats. Now going to be truly a 1v, I believe, 4 scenario. You name it, not going to be able to be rezzed here. Good spray down coming in from the M416 four times of Legendary. Found a few connections, but also revealed his final position. Over to the other members of Tony team playing the flank. Pinned down now behind the rock. The push comes up from behind. Is able to find the spray down Tony team. No surprises based off of how we saw them play out those last few phases of the game. Walk away with a massive chicken dinner. 19 points is what they were able to accumulate from this match. 9 points from kills and 10 points from the first place finish. A massive game. A significant game for Tony team that found themselves slipping down to fourth place position after game number one of the day. This will absolutely be propelling them into first place. I'd be uh, I'd be surprised if we see them anywhere else after this match. We'll take a look at some of the replays throughout this match. 
and see how the game progressed. A quick recap. And to some of the chaos that we saw erupt around the desert. We've got two more games on the day as well. The halfway point of the day has been met. I believe we're going to be kicking right back into another Miramar match. And then heading over to Arangol to end out the day. Fight Club had a fairly good game here. They were very impactful in terms of the pressure that they were putting out. The kills that they were able to pick up in that match. Another perspective of Fight Club here in this game. Picking up a few kills. Hackapolitis, man, this was a crazy opportunity for them to third party on top of two different squads right there. Unfortunately, did not go their way. And as we progress into the final few moment, moments rather of this game, we'll see how it played out. Tony team capitalizing beautifully from their center position to eliminate the threats all around the edges of the circle. It's what you have to do when you hold on to the center ground. But when you have four players alive, it becomes increasingly easy to do so. Shots come out, and that's the closing kill of the game, the one that secured them, that chicken dinner on top of the Preachers. We'll look at our point totals from match number two. Two teams, Brute Force and Boris, are not able to walk away with any points here from this match. It's unfortunate to see, especially Brute Force, who had previously been sitting in first place position. That's definitely going to be given up and probably taken over by a Tony team after this match. 19 points is what Tony team walk away with. The Preachers in level both taking away 11 points from this match. Hecapolitis with 10. So definitely some good numbers here on the boards. We're going to see the leaderboards really develop after this match gets included. And I'm sure we'll be taking a look at those total leaderboards here in just a few minutes. Our damage leaders from this round. What a ramp up, at least from what we saw on Sanak in the previous match played. The first match of the day. Big time damage. We hardly had anyone over 400 damage in the previous game, but here we've got almost, what is that? Uh, almost eight players over 400 damage from that round. Kill leaders, Blacklight coming in huge for the members of the Tony team. Seven kills representing that solo player's performance. A hell of a game coming out for the Tony team. Hackapolitas stacked up against the Tony team. Two teams with significant damage here in this game. Unfortunately, Hackapolitas weren't able to continue it on. They had some massive plays in that match. Huge grenades coming out onto the intruders and such. And unfortunately, too much commotion down on the southern side of those late game phases. Spell disaster for that squad. And here are your leaderboards. After game number six has been played, we're at the halfway point of today. Tony team, yes. They have been able to take down first place position. Istanbul Wildcats now in second place. Brute Force going to be displaced from first down to third. However, they're not out of the running for that first place spot just yet. Still going to be a lot of PUBG to be played out here. And a lot of movement to be had on the leaderboards. Our top nine currently, 33 points is the threshold. Hackapolita is going to be outside of that top nine position by just four points. But multiple teams still going to be in this fight. It's not over yet. One or two chicken dinners here or there is all it's going to take for the likes of intruders, level, Boris, or preachers to propel themselves into those qualification positions entering in to phase one of 2020 for the PELC. As I said, guys, I believe we're going to be transitioning over into one more game of Miramar after this and then ending the day on Erangel. So make sure that if you go on a break, if you go get a snack, if you go grab a drink, the schedule does go fast. We don't waste any time getting into our seventh match of the game. We'll see you in just a few minutes.